access to, you know, the, the full rosters of everyone working at the NSA, the entire intelligence community, uh, and undercover assets all around the world, uh, the locations of every station uh, we have, what their missions are, and so forth. But I, sitting at my desk, uh, certainly have the authorities to, to wiretap anyone from you or your accountant to a federal judge to even the president if I had a personal email. Chilling words from the NSA leaker, Edward Snowden, out of himself in a Guardian newspaper interview as the source of leaks that unleashed a storm of controversy in this country and around the world. He revealed massive SNA, uh, NSA surveillance programs to collect phone records and internet data on a scale that many people never imagined. Snowden's a former CIA employee who also worked for the computer consulting firm Booz Allen Hamilton. Well, joining me now is James Woolsey. He's a former director of Central Intelligence and a former vice president and officer of Booz Allen Hamilton. He's currently chairman of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Welcome to you, uh, Ambassador. What is your reaction to Edward Snowden's decision to leak this information? I think Mr. Snowden had no right to arrogate to himself the right to decide where to strike the balance between liberty and security. President Obama pointed out a couple of days ago that this balance has to be struck and that uh, the court system, particularly the Foreign Intelligence uh, Surveillance Act court, uh, the executive branch, the president, attorney general, uh, uh, and uh, the Congress uh, with the reviews by the congressional committees involved uh, every few months. Uh, this has been a very precisely crafted system for making the decision about where to strike the balance between uh, uh, liberty uh, and security. And Snowden arrogated that entire decision to himself. So he decided that it was him who got to strike that balance, not the elected representatives that we vote for, not the president, uh, not the courts. And I think uh, for arrogance uh, and uh, uh, improper behavior, the arrogating to yourself that kind of power uh, when you're supposed to be taking care of your duties in the intelligence community is uh, stunningly wrong and uh, since he's confessed to the crime I hope that uh, when we are able to uh, uh, take him into custody uh, he's uh, locked up for the rest of his life. What do you believe the consequences of his decision could be at their worst? Well. Uh, the problem is that once you start explaining to Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah how you are operating, they can avoid what you're doing. And you can't explain to the American people without explaining to Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda. Once you're sitting there blabbing about how these decisions are made, you have decided you're going to tell our enemies, those who want to kill us, those who want to fly airplanes into buildings and all the rest, how this all works and you've decided that yourself if you're Snowden. Uh, so he could well be responsible in the future for many, many deaths. Uh, we don't know and we may never know for sure uh, because uh, one doesn't know what goes into individual uh, decisions uh, by the terrorists, but uh, uh, Snowden has made it easier for them to, to kill Americans and others. But isn't the reality that if you're in Al-Qaeda, of course you imagine that the American intelligence agencies are probably trying to check your email or your internet traffic or your cell phones. I mean, I've watched dramas on TV for years where this exact thing is done. It's not a trade secret. What is concerning many Americans is the sheer quantity of private data that appears to, being, to be being amassed by the government without anyone outside of a few select people in the judiciary, the executive uh, and Congress knowing about it. And it may be a symptom of modern times, but, you know, I feel uncomfortable that people well, yeah. I don't know know everything about my uh, online activity. Why should they? Well, they don't know everything about your online activity because they, it's, illegal. Could, right? it's illegal for them to take some steps with respect to it, such as to get into the substance uh, of, the, of the intercept. Uh, what uh, this is, as far as Americans are concerned, is what's called metadata. It's who's calling whom and so forth. If you and I talk on phones uh, to one another every day, and then one day I call Ayman Zawahiri uh, of Al-Qaeda in Pakistan, uh, yes, uh, somebody is going to say, you know, I wonder what... Uh, uh, has been going on between Woolsey and Pierce. Let's uh, let's have a, a look at that. Uh, but uh, this, routinely and systematically, there's no looking into the substance uh, of your calls or mine. It doesn't uh, uh, work that way.
To you, uh, Ambassador Woolsey, if I may, I just want to read out the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution to remind people, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, I just don't see how you can say that what is going on here in complete secrecy from 99% of the people it's being done to uh, lives up to the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. It is palpably a breach, isn't it? Well, it depends on whether or not you want to preserve the country's ability to operate in a world of uh, terrorism in which a lot of terrorists are very uh, technically sophisticated. Well, that, yeah, that, if you want to defend respect, the country, you're right, going to have to defend it. Right, and, but I understand that, and there's a bit of sympathy for that from many Americans, but that wasn't the question. The, the question is whether... It is the question. Well, it's not... It is the question. No, the my, balance, my, the, that balance between security and liberty is the question. I understand, no, I understand that question. is your answer. But the question I was putting to you was whether what is going on, given the absolute secrecy with which it has been going on until Edward Snowden revealed this, whether it is actually allowable under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Where, is the, the, where is the probable cause given for 99.9% of the information being effectively seized here? Given the fact that this system was put together by the people's elected, con uh, elected representatives, that it's been upheld by the courts, that it's monitored by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, that it's monitored by uh, Attorney General and officials in the executive branch uh, every uh, 90 days, it was one of these 90-day reports uh, that was uh, leaked, and that it is systematically uh, supported by people uh, like the chairman of the Senate Intelligence uh, uh, Committee, Senator Feinstein, uh, I think you would have to say that the government on this subject has done a reasonable job of balancing these two very important interests. If you try to look at liberty without considering security at all, you're putting on blinders. You, you, it really, you can't answer the question, just as you couldn't okay. answer it if you just talked uh, about uh, uh, security and not about liberty. They uh, both have to be considered, and you appear, not, Pierce, not to want to consider uh, uh, security. No, no, I absolutely do, do want to consider it. I was putting a, a question to you, because I was intrigued by what your answer would be, because I've been fighting, as you probably aware, a, a lengthy gun control campaign where the absolute letter of the Second Amendment is deemed sacrosanct to so many Americans, and yet it seems to me that many of the same Americans that feel so strongly about the wording of that amendment are quite happy for their rights under the Fourth Amendment to be ridden over. And that's what I find an interesting are, contradiction. Are, but well, 